So just to situate myself, I'm, I'm a conservative Republican, but I'm opposed to Donald Trump. So don't take my word for, for it. This is, I'm reading from a Truth Social post by Donald Trump himself a couple of weeks ago, refers to Rich Lowry, who has destroyed the once wonderful and influential National Review, the pride and joy of the legendary William F. Buckley. So I'm not a Trump guy, but I am opposed to this resolution. I think there are three tests. One, did Trump clearly and unambiguously violate the law? Would this be good for the country prosecuting him? And would it serve the extremely important political goal of making sure he doesn't win a nomination again and is not elected president of the United States again? If this resolution fails any of those tests that should go down, as it happens, it fails all three. So the fact of the matter is, and David alluded to this uh, some, once you get out of the political and moral realm, where clearly what Trump did was abysmal, atrocious, literally infamous, and get into the legal realm, then you're in a zone where inherently technicalities and mincing distinctions matter. It's no longer just rhetoric. It, th these words really count. Key thing, corrupt intent. Almost all the, the supposed charges that uh, he'd be prosecuted on involve corrupt intent, which means demonstrating that he didn't sincerely believe that the election was stolen. And I hate to say it, I think he is truly a fired with a passionate intensity uh, and sincerity on this stuff. I think if you put him on a lie detector test, he would pass it without question, making some of these outlandish claims. Doesn't speak well of him, but just shows that there's no way you're going to establish the requisite intent. Incitement's a word that's been bandied about. Incitement, very specific in U.S. law. It means a clear and knowing uh, call to violence, right? It just doesn't mean being reckless. It means a clear and knowing call for uh, imminent violence. You're not going to prove that. Insurrection, again, you can throw it around. It's good to write in op-eds, but it has a specific meaning. And U.S. statutes, rebellion that can't be put down just by uh, law enforcement, that's not going to apply here. Obstructing Congress. So if it's a crime uh, for members of Congress to object to the electors when the other party's candidate wins a presidential race, then there are many Democrats who are guilty of exactly the same crime, including leaders of the January 6th committee. Yes, it was insane for Trump to think that Mike Pence could unilaterally change the, the uh, count of the electors on January 6th, but we don't prosecute people for insane legal theories. And then just to, to underline this point, that technicalities matter once you're in, you're in the legal realm, once you're in the courtroom. We all know the call that Trump had in Georgia with the Secretary of State. You got to find me 11,000 votes. If you actually read the transcript of that call, which is what will happen in a court of law, Trump makes it clear he thinks there's a pool of 400,000 fraudulent votes. So he's not just saying go manufacture 11,000. He's saying go find these votes that I know are fraudulent. He has two or three lawyers on the call with him. People usually don't commission felonies in the company of their lawyers. And the lawyers say, look, we've done fine grain analysis. We believe there are tens of thousands of fraudulent votes. And the takeaway at the end of the call is, can we have a meeting with you, Secretary of State's office, and you can explain how we are, we're wrong? I'm sorry, no one is going to jail for that call. No one is going to jail for that call. So the legalities really matter, and they're just, they're just not here. Now, second test, is it good for the country? No. Uh, whatever we might like, if you saw the reaction to the FBI search and you thought that was over the top and hysterical, just wait. Just wait to, to he's prosecuted. You think this country is divided now? Just wait until you try to, to uh, prosecute him. There's a reason we honor Gerald Ford for pardoning Richard Nixon. It's because he got the country out of a box. Now you have a people affirmatively saying we need to get in to this box and it will invite retaliation. You prosecute Trump, Republicans win the presidency in 2024. I guarantee you, Joe Biden will be prosecuted for something by the Republican-led uh, Justice Department, maybe having to do with the sleazy dealings of his son, Hunter Biden. And then finally, the name of the game here is make sure Donald Trump is not president again. The FBI search was the best day politically he's had in a very long time. If you prosecute him, it'll even be better for him. So in summary, the chant, lock her up, when Republicans were saying that about Hillary Clinton was dumb and unworthy. The same is true of lock him up. This resolution must and should fail. Rich, thank you very much.
Powerful stuff from both of you. And I think this is a good point at which to reveal the results of the poll to see who has the greatest challenge here. And we can say that coming into this debate for the idea that Donald J. Trump should be prosecuted, 81%. Rich, the challenge is, is would it, largely would it now yours. Say things, things are always darkest before they go completely black. <laughs> Five percent say no, <laughs> but fourteen percent are undecided. I find that uh, particularly interesting. Uh, now we are going to bring in audience questions, uh, and I'm just going to remind you that uh, Connor's told you about how to do that. To, to Click on the Ask Question tab. Tell us your name if you want your name to be read out as part of the question. Um, but before we start audience questions, uh, first, a short apology from me. Uh, yes, we do know how to video conference, but mea culpa, <laughs> my internet fell off the air the minute we started. That hasn't happened to me before in years of actually presenting television from my living room during pandemic. So my apologies to the Intelligence Squared audience. That was me. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. But um, Connor is safely with you to shepherd you through. Can I pick up um, just a thought for, for David and, and for Rich here? Because there doesn't seem to be a real debate between you about the morality of the actions of Donald J. Trump. But we heard from Rich there a very strong case that Donald Trump believes he won. Donald Trump believes there were pools of extra voters that uh, weren't counted. He believes he was swindled out of his second term. Uh, David, who are we to say we can judge his psyche that he's making it up? We're not judging his psyche. And he's not being put on trial if he's put on trial. Uh, for his beliefs. Uh, it is the uh, federal code against conspiring to defraud the United States, where the Georgia phone call, which <clears throat> Rich brought up, uh, would be prosecuted. And in that law, it says using deceit to thwart a government function. Can anybody listen to that call to the Secretary of State of Georgia and say Trump was not making something up? Does it matter whether he believed it? His actions, in all of these cases, his actions are what should be prosecuted, not his beliefs. Uh, we would be here forever trying to <clears throat> prosecute Donald Trump for immoral acts. Um, and in fact, immorality isn't necessarily illegal, <clears throat> is it? But actions violating federal law, yes, they are. And, and, but, and to, to what extent are we going to continue to argue that this man is so disassociated with truth that he is incapable of knowing his own actions? Yeah, I'm sorry. Just as a matter of law, and I know this isn't satisfying, but as a matter of law, a, a, any number of these supposed charges do require corrupt intent. And David, even just what you said, deceit. That deceit means a willful effort to mislead. You know it's wrong, you know you're lying, and you, you do it anyway. And I'm just saying, as a matter of law, look, I don't think it's, it's worse that he believes this stuff. As a moral matter, as a political matter, it's worse. It makes it more important that he should go away and de be defeated politically. But legally, it's not just the act. It is the intent. And, if, and again, David, I think, has conceded the point by the use of that word deceit. That has a very specific meaning in the law. And again, I think we both agree about this. We're not talking about morality. We're talking about the law. And the law is often unsatisfying if you are just seeking a moral or political outcome, which I think, and I understand the impulse, which I think a lot of people are doing here, but it's misapplied in the legal realm. It will backfire. You'll end up losing the case. You'll end up losing the case and giving him a, a bigger victory, which would be just perverse. So don't go down the route in the first place. But Rich, can I just pick up on, on this mm -hmm. point? Because there is an argument that uh, the case will be lost, he'll gain support, he'll emerge from this stronger. But isn't the, the, the point of principle that doesn't make it right to leave him be if there are clearly indictable offences here? If, if there are clearly indictable offences, which there aren't. So I have a multi-layered argument just on, on the legalities. I don't think David has made a case. Um, I don't think the case is is there. And if you're going to be you can't be the least bit adventurous or novel in a case that this that is this 
consequential. That that's just a very bad thing. If he shoots someone on Fifth Avenue, you know, if the Midtown prosecutors investigating shootings in Midtown Manhattan and it arises that Donald Trump shot someone on Fifth Avenue, there's no doubt, right? <laughs> and uh, we don't need to know why he did it. Even he shot him. Okay, prosecute him. But this is all extremely uh, murky. And a lot of it involves, I'm sorry to say, you know, a lot of it involves intent. But Rich, you're saying that Donald Trump's intent is only to be judged by some small group of lawyers who were sitting with him when he made that call to the Secretary of State, that he is utterly incapable of knowing his own intent. I'd like to see some prosecutors with him on the stand, take him to task about just what he knows and doesn't know. No, I, 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 that's not what I not said. Not his I didn't psyche. Say his psyche is not on trial. His actions are. Well, again, David, intent matters. So if you say his psyche is not on trial, you're saying intent doesn't matter. As a matter of black and white law, no, a number of these statutes, the intent does matter. And I'm not saying it's, it's the judgment of a couple lawyers. I'm saying everyone, you know, some of the most compelling testimony in January uh, 6th committee was these insiders saying, Mr. President, is not there. There's no, there's no fraud. You know, Bill Barr, Mr. President's BS. And they asked Bill Barr, what did the president say? He didn't accept it. He argued back. He pushed back in every single instance. So again, the legal realm's not satisfying in these respects. We, I, I, was, I, I would think a number of people supporting this resolution, they want a certain moral and political outcome. Impeachment didn't work. Um, they're going to this. And he committed impeachable offenses up the wazoo, okay? But you can't uh, prosecute someone for an impeachable offense of this nature. It was a political offense. It was a moral offense against our system. Once you get it again into the legal realm, it's just a whole different zone. And I'm afraid David hasn't made the case on that. But Rich, by your logic, if he fired a gun on Fifth Avenue and killed somebody, and then he went in and said, I don't believe I did it. Well, I don't believe I did there's it. a dead body, there are fingerprints on the gun, and there's a bullet that can be traced right. to the gun. That, see, there, there it's yeah. not murky. It's, it's a clear violation of the law. And if you got him on that, mm -hmm. I, I'm willing to uh, be open to maybe there, something like that emerges, but it mm -hmm. hasn't yet. I think it says quite a lot, doesn't it, that... Rich, you're saying there would pretty much have to be a dead body on the streets with Donald J. Trump's fingerprints on him. It would have to be something clear. Yeah, a clear violation of the law. You know, a meeting with the Oath Keepers in, in the White House the week before. You guys are storming the Capitol. I know about the Capitol. Here's a map. Here's where you guys go. All right. Um, a speech on, January, on the morning of January 6th, attack the Capitol. That's what incitement is. The United States has a First Amendment, and incitement is not protected, but is narrowly drawn not to mm -hmm. intrude mm -hmm. on free speech rights. So you got to say, it. go attack the Capitol. That's incitement. I, I'd be in favor of indicting him in a minute on that, but that's not what he said. In fact, he covered himself by saying, you know, be peaceful, court of law. Now you might say, be peaceful, roll your eyes, court of law, and that's the realm you want in. You want to get out of the moral and political realm. You want in the legal realm, court of law. That's going to matter. There are I questions think... coming in. And actually, I think what I'd like to do is encourage those who are listening, perhaps especially those of the 14 percent who don't know what they think yet about whether Donald Trump should be prosecuted, uh, encouraging you to, to bring in your questions. I'm going to start bringing in a few because I think they'll add to the themes that we can kind of <laughs> back back and forth and kind of explore a little more. Um, Actually, the first question that came in says, does Rich believe Trump has broken any laws since the start of his successful presidential campaign? Do I believe he's broken any laws? Um, no. I, I, um, um, this, this, this is the problem, is so often in U.S. politics, and this has been true since Watergate, we want to say because someone did something wrong we disagree with or represented a threat to the constitutional system, it must be a violation of the law. Now, I think the repurposing of the uh, military funding to go to build the border wall was an abuse, was illegal, um, but it wasn't, you know, it's not a crime the way we're talking about. This, Barack Obama did the same thing when he rewrote immigration law unilaterally to regularize the status of a bunch of illegal immigrants. That also was illegal. But you wouldn't prosecute Barack Obama for it. You wouldn't prosecute Trump for that. It's impeachable. It's, it's technically impeachable. You want a higher level, I think, of political offense to impeach. But again, just because something's bad, and I thought David was very powerful on this in his opening remarks, it doesn't make it illegal. And 
if you get it into the legal realm, it's not it's not healthy and good for a country. We should we should argue our politics out in the political realm to the extent it gets into the legal realm. It's we've already seen some of this. It's going to hollow out our our legal institutions, especially if you're stretching to get someone because you consider them especially noxious. That creates the predicate for someone else stretching, and you're not going to like it when they stretch to get your side. Don't do it. That's that's my um, that's so, my so advice. Rich, make the political rich, case, make the moral case. Mm-hmm. Don't do this. So, Rich, you would argue that all of the efforts Trump made and his people around him made to get Mike Pence as vice president to stand up and stop the count in the Congress, all of those efforts are just free speech. Y- yes, I think they're wrong. They're grossly. I'm not asking you whether they're wrong. We can agree that they're wrong. But a president of the United States is organizing his power to get his vice president to stop the count, to stop a legitimate congressional function is just his free speech and not an illegal act? Well, as a legal matter, it's not illegal. It's grossly wrong and impeachable. And in fact, he was impeached for it. But would you just... I know you wouldn't prosecute him, but Jamie Raskin, is he guilty of a crime, the Democratic congressman from Maryland, because he objected to uh, electors when, you know, George W. Bush was, was elected or, or Trump was elected? Is that that's a crime or is it actually part of the process where you have this uh, push and pull um, on uh, uh, over electors and debate about it? And if yes. someone's if someone's grossly violates the spirit of the system, you impeach them. Can I just, at this point, bring in something that could change the facts, that could change the shape of this debate uh, over the coming days or weeks? And I'm thinking about the Mar-a-Lago raid. Um, David, your thoughts first on whether you believe Donald Trump could be prosecuted or jailed for espionage? Well, it actually doesn't matter what I believe. If, indeed, under the three laws cited in the warrant, we don't have the affidavit yet to know the detailed argument, for it. But if in any one of those three laws cited, the Espionage Act, then Section 1519, then Section 27, one of the federal code, if indeed Trump took top secret and beyond top secret documents to Mar-a-Lago, all on his own, uh, having no right to do it, uh, are you hearing me okay? Yeah, yes. you're fine. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, uh, and 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 the Justice Department chooses to go to court. In other words, they indict him and chooses to go to court and they can demonstrate that, yes, he ordered people to put those in boxes and get them out of here and get them on the airplane in some chaotic situation. He violated the law. So maybe that ultimately is where the case will be made. But I do think the Justice Department has a hell of a lot to work with from the January 6th committee already. But this approach is, this is, a deeply illiberal approach, if you forgive me. Usually what we do, we, we look for violations of the law, and then we see someone violates them, and then we go after that person. You don't mm-hmm. focus on a particular person. Say, maybe I can get him on this. If I don't get him on this, I can get him on that. If I don't get him on that, I can really stretch and maybe get him on this. That's not the way it's supposed to work. And, and you've We didn't had even know about legal this jurists last of, week. Of, you've had legal jurists on both sides saying this is a really bad way to go about it. And the problem you're going to have, you know, we need to know the facts. I mean, the facts are facts are always important, what was going on in Mar-a-Lago. But you can't say James Comey, as I'm not saying you say this, David, maybe you believe Hillary Clinton should have been prosecuted. But you can't say James Comey was a great act of statesmanship to choose not to prosecute Hillary Clinton for her violations of the handling of classified material, and then say, we got to get Trump. Those things don't add up. And if you try to do it, you will cause this conflagration because people will not accept the legitimacy of it. They'll think it's unfair and selective. And again, that's getting your politics into the, the legal realm and destroying your legal system. Tom asks, no, and I think no. this is relevant at this point, David, Tom asks, mm-hmm. how do or perhaps how could Trump voters get on board with prosecution? If you're making the case for prosecution and you're sitting in a room full of loyal Trump voters, David, what do you say to them above all? <laughs> well, <laughs> I will try to make them talk. You well, might feel like you're in the lion's <laughs> den. A little uncomfortable. But I, 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 what's I your Rich best is, argument? <laughs> I think Rich is even going to have trouble with those people. Especially. They're going to hate him more than me. Uh, but I'm going to try to get them to talk to me about facts. I'm going to try to get them to talk to me about questions of truth. And then I'm going to try to get them to talk to me 
about complicity by the president of the United States in fomenting that mob that attacked the U.S. Capitol. And then if it's about Mar-a-Lago, I will ask <laughs> them to withhold judgment until the Justice Department, however long it takes them, decides whether to indict, to charge, or not. And if they do, I would simply ask them to read these laws, to read the actual content of, of the federal code. And, and actually, perhaps millions of Americans are reading the federal code for the first time. This is a good, a good historical legal education. Mm -hmm. I would ask them to simply try to have an open mind that this is not just an attempt to get Trump. It is. So, so let's we didn't say, even David, know about the raid in Mar-a-Lago till last week. So, Dave, let's say one of one of those uh, Trump voters says, well, "Professor Blight, you, you make a make a lot of sense. I love your work. Frederick Douglass biography is awesome, which it is. I'm not just making that up as a hypothetical. Um, why didn't you want to indict Hillary? Would you have indicted Hillary over her violations of the handling of classified material? Because that's the first thing I'll uh, ask you. In retrospect, uh, no, but I'd have to go back and look at those facts again. That happened it was a, all it was a, in the It was a technical violation of, of the election. law. There, there's no doubt she violated the law. So if the new standard is, if any of our politicians uh -huh. violate the law, we're nailing them to the wall no matter what, uh -huh. no matter what the political yeah. effect, no matter how it will drive okay. people crazy, okay. then you, you have to favor indicting her too. And then we're already Rich. in this tong warfare. Okay, but Rich, Rich, I'm going to ask you here. It was the same thing I would ask those Trump voters in a room. Are there not qualitative judgments we must make? Qualitative judgments are always made under the law. Judges make them every day. Supreme, yeah. Supreme Court justice, courts of appeal justices make them every day. The violation Hillary Clinton committed of getting a, a second server for documents, uh, that's, that's one kind of uh, violation. And if it was a violation, Maybe, just maybe, there should have been some uh, answering for that before law. But qualitatively, gathering up absolute top secret documents for whatever his motives were, and we don't know that yet, whatever purposes he may have had, whatever sheer sloppiness he had with, with major documents, is qualitatively of a different level of violation of law Why? than what we can claim. Because Why? Look, Hillary Clinton set up a, a, a server system explicitly to have an end run around the State Department's protection of classified documents. And again, you're slipping into and in how you characterize Trump. At the end there, you're uh -huh. saying it's sloppiness. Well, if you're you're the making the qualitative judgments, sloppiness is different than you know having a blueprint of a hypersonic missile to sell to the Russians, right? 